Hello, my name is Oliver. I'm a professional teacher and game programmer. Uh, and I want to show you how to set up a interesting particle system to create this sort of suction vortex effect in Godot. Here's the effect we're going for. In our game, I have these urns that have this sort of field of suction above them and they suck in other entities in the game that I'm, I'm not going to spoil yet. So let's get into how to do it. To start, let's make a new scene. I'm just going to call it vortex. And we're actually going to start out by adding in, I'm going to add in my urn sprite. Obviously, if you have some other vacuum thing that's creating this suction, uh, use that. But I think it's helpful to have some other sprite in here to have some, some idea of scale um, while you're tuning these values. Okay, now let's add our GPU particle system. The first thing you need to do to your GPU system is give it a texture and a material. I have a dust sprite sheet that I'm going to use. This sprite is actually four different dust particles and it's going to select one of them at random. I'll show, show you how we do that. But you can also just do this with a single sprite and it'll work just fine. So we've got our texture and now we got to add a process material. This is where most of the settings for this particle system are going to live. Let's start by just in the spawn zone for these particles. I'm going to go to spawn position and I'm going to say I want these to spawn within a box and I want that box to be up above the urn that's where all the particles are going to spawn and they're going to get sucked downwards. Now you might be tempted to just take the particle system and put it up there, but the suction point uh, that we're going to apply later, it's going to pull the particles towards the origin. So we want to keep the origin of that particle system down here um, and just adjust the box using these settings here. Let's do like a 60 by 60 box. Let's move it up by like 250 pixels. Remember in Godot, negative is up. There we go. Sometimes it can help to crank the spawn rate uh, while you're dialing stuff in, and that'll just help you see the actual shape a little bit clearer. Okay, now let's... I, I'm sick of seeing these four sprites all strung together, so let's make it select one of them at random. This is a little bit of a hack. We, we have to tell it that we're going to do an animation, but then it's just going to pick one of the animation frames at random. So to do that, you start with the Material tab down here. Say I want a new Canvas material and you check off this box that says particle animation. And in particular, we, we wanna say we have four frames horizontally. If you have 10 particles in your sprite sheet, you want that to be 10, you know, et cetera. Great, and it's a little hard to see because I cranked the spawn rate so high, but it's only pulling the first sprite for now. So what we have to do is go back to our process material, go to display, animation, and then tell this to pick any, any of them from the beginning to the end. In this case, we say zero to one to mean anywhere within that sprite range. And now it's picking all the sprite sprites at random. To give us even more variance, we can also have it rotate them at random. I like this anchor button here. You can define a min and max, so I might say zero to 360, but the anchor button lets you say, where's the target value? And then what is the variance around that? So in this case, I can say zero with a variance of 180. You'll see why that's useful as we go on. But now that'll randomize the rotation of these sprites. Here's the kind of secret sauce. We're gonna go acceleration, radial excel. Again, I'm gonna use our anchor here and I'm gonna set the target value to a, an acceleration of negative 1000. Radial meaning along the radius of this shape um, from the origin. So a negative value means all these particles are getting pulled towards the center. I'm also going to go ahead and turn off the gravity. It really doesn't make a big difference, but it makes this more agnostic to how you rotate it. Great, so they're all getting sucked down, but you're probably noticing the big problem. This is what stumped me for a long time trying to set the system up. The particles are overshooting that point and coming out the bottom, and that looks wrong, obviously. Um, but if you squint your eyes and cover up that bottom part, it looks right. So that's what, essentially what we're going to do. To do this, I'm going to use a polygon 2D. You could also just use like a sprite, a square sprite. Uh, that's what I did originally when I did this, but the polygon gives you a little more flexibility. So we're gonna define a polygon that is the boundary that we want our particles to show up in. We're going to clip our particles to that shape. You'll see what I'm talking about in a sec. Once you have your polygon 2D in here, you can just start clicking and it'll start dropping in these points. So here's my polygon. It can be any color. It doesn't matter. What's important is I make the particles a child of that polygon. And then I'm going to go visibility, clip children, clip only. And it makes it so the polygon doesn't show up at all. 
It's just the boundary within which its children are shown. And so the particle system is only going to show up within this polygon now. And we can also go in and really fine tune this thing. This can um, really kind of make it look like they're really going in there. Nothing spilling out over the edges. There's a bit more we can do to this thing. I'm going to bump up the amount again to say 30 particles. For one thing, when the particles spawn in, they're just instantly there. I think it's a little nicer if they kind of fade in in one way or another. One way to do this is with the scale. Display, scale. I'm actually going to turn down the base size a little bit. Again, I'm going to use my anchor. I'm going to say target the size of like 0.8 with a variance of 0.2. So they're a little smaller than, than normal now. All right, a lot of these options have a curve option. You see scale curve here. That lets you define a curve where the scale is going to change over the lifetime of the particle. So I'm going to say new curve, click here. And this is really powerful. If you haven't used this before, you're in for a treat. I'm going to pull the beginning all the way down. So they start zero, they start invisible. Um, and I'm going to have them get big pretty quickly. Something like that. Yeah, it looks good. So they kind of come in and then they get sucked down. Um, makes it so they, they don't just flash into existence. And that's basically it. You can fine tune this in lots of ways. One thing I like to do is turn down the opacity a little bit. Um, so I'll just go to color curves and drop the alpha just a little. So the background, uh, you know, it's, it's just a little bit see-through. But play with the amount, play with, uh, you can also do some turbulence if you want it to look less controlled. All right, there you have it. That's how you make a simple vacuum vortex particle system uh, in Godot. If this was at all useful to you, uh, you can help us out by wishlisting our upcoming game, Cappy and Tappy, on Steam, or you can like and subscribe here. Uh, anything helps us. Thanks for watching, and I hope you learned something.